Hey Vikes, happy Wednesday. I'm Riley and you're watching SVTV. We are making stories by teens for teens. Creating a platform, finding character, and giving others a voice. This is SVTV. The Kansas Department of Education recently put together a task force for the new statewide continuous learning plan. Mr. McAllister was involved in this, and I FaceTimed him to figure out his rule. Hi, Vikes. I'm here with Mr. McAllister, and Mr. McAllister was recently on the Kansas Department of Education task force for continuous learning. Is that right? Correct. And what was the task force for? Uh, well, the task force was created in response to Governor Laura Kelly's uh, order to close schools for the remainder of this school year. And as, as part of that, she and the Education Commissioner, Randy Watson, put together a group of oh, approximately 40 teachers from around the state to come up with what they called or are calling the continuous learning plan. And so the idea is that, as Dr. Noble has said, though the doors, the school is stopped, the learning does not. So when, the, when did you get started on the task force? <clears throat> uh, it was, yeah, it's kind of funny. I think Governor Kelly announced the order on a Sunday maybe or Saturday, it was over the weekend, and that night, and it was kind of funny, she interviewed, during her uh, her press conference, she said that she was putting together this task force. Well, that night, I got an email, do you want to be on the task force? Mm -hmm. So, the task force hasn't re hadn't really been created and, until a few hours later, and by Monday morning, the next day, we were going, and within about... 48, I think we spent 48 solid hours, not solid hours, 48 hours on and off over those two days creating the continuous learning plan. And then by Wednesday, uh, we had to finalize things. So all in all, I mean, it was like meeting after meeting after meeting after meeting on online and drawing up plans and then trashing those and starting over. And it was, it was crazy. What was the most difficult process, do you think? The most difficult part of this, the, the task force, has been trying to anticipate the needs of students in various locations around the state. And we ultimately, we threw up our hands and said, there's no way we can't, we can't, there's no way to accommodate every single need of every single student. And so the task force made their recommendations purposely vague. We didn't want to... Uh, say specifically this is what you have to do these are simply recommendations from our point of view and we also understand that i can see that you're in i assume somewhere in your house yeah the kids parents are cooped up together sometimes fighting over internet that maybe we ought to think outside the box as to what learning looks like maybe it's not just a bunch of worksheets that we're going to throw at students but maybe it's you know uh, go outside, take a picture of what you're experiencing, how are things going, taking into consideration that students and parents' mental health um, is just as important as their maybe content uh, of what our curriculum says. So what was the curriculum spread up like secondary and primary education? or? Yeah, that's a great question. It's interesting. We started out with trying to go by grade level and then quickly – uh, scrap that and for high school it was by content area for everyone middle at the below the middle school level it was by grade level so we were going to try to do it by grade level for everybody but that just it just didn't work so we went a different direction so I was on the high school middle school content uh, team or committee whatever you want to call it are you happy with how it turned out? I am. I am a little um, worried that some school districts, not all, but some are going to take what we said, the recommendations as law, 
and not recommendations. I mean, you don't just because we said we recommend 30 minutes of education per day does not mean you can't go 20 or 15 minutes. Yeah. Um, it's just those are recommendations, and that's what they need to be seen as. And, and every local, every school district is different. Um, so what do you think Seaman High School will do with these recommendations? Have you heard, like, other teachers been talking, or what, what do you think your classroom will look like based off of what you guys decided? Well, um, I think every classroom might be just a tad bit different. Um, we already have. Um, once the guidelines came out or the recommendations, the Seaman High School, and then there's a middle school, and then there's an elementary. So they're all broken up by uh, school level as well. Came up with our own continuous learning plan, and that should be announced sometime this week. It's still in a draft form, as far as I know. But we've already met as a content area. I've had two or three meetings with Mrs. Sittenauer and the rest of the team to discuss what we're doing as a for social studies. And I, ELA is doing the same thing, math, science, everybody's doing that. Um, so we're trying to put some things together, and I think flexibility is the key word, um, that understanding that, and I've, I've told my students, the ones that I've met with, that, you know, it may, something may work today and it may not work tomorrow, so we may scrap it. And yeah. So I, th I, I think that's the operative word, flexibility and grace, you know, be willing to forgive and, and move on and that everything won't work as perfectly as we want it to. All right, Mr. McAllister, is there anything else you'd like to add? Um, I just, you know, I, I really want to make sure that all the students, you included, understand that uh, what we're going to try to put together is is hopefully going to give you something to keep your mind off what's going on, but at the same time um, to understand that, you know, you, we all have different challenges and we want you to stay safe and focus on something other than what's going on in the news every day. At Seaman, each department and teacher will probably set up their course and materials a little bit differently. So make sure that you are checking Schoology and your email frequently. That way you can stay in the know. Students, today you will receive the district's new continuous learning plan. If you have any questions or concerns, please get in contact with your building officials. Grab and go lunches are still available at Logan Elementary and the Middle School. You can pick up food from 11 to noon and a student must be present. All library resources are still available through Schoology. If you do not have access to the E and audiobooks, please get in contact with Mrs. Esser. Check out the public library for things to do during this time, such as ebooks and movies. The counselors and many other teachers want you to know that they are still available for you. Please reach out to them with any questions, comments, or concerns as they are only an email or message away. Now over to Joshi with the weather after this quick commercial break. Hey Vikes, I'm back with your SVTV NBA 2K tournament update. Not a lot of games happened, but one did. Andrew and his Knicks did beat Saving in the Pelicans. I do believe Andrew got this win because of how productive DeAndre Jordan was on the floor, scoring 17 points, grabbing 10 rebounds, and passing the ball well to get himself 5 assists. He's definitely the player of the game brought to you by Stuco. There will be a lot more exciting games played today on stream, so make sure to be ready to watch some amazing 2K basketball. On another note, the tournament might come to a halt as we wait for the commissioner's decision on what he wants to do during the lockdown. Here is the updated SVTV NBA 2K tournament bracket. As you can see, we still have a lot more games to go, 
but we are slowly whittling out and finding the best NBA 2K player in Seaman High School. Good afternoon. Highs in the 70s today will be followed by slightly cooler temperatures tomorrow, but it'll be a mild start with temperatures in the low to mid 50s during the morning and then in the upper 60s for the afternoon, a high around 69 degrees. So really no complaints heading into your Thursday. Now today was a little bit on the windy side. But as we go throughout the next couple of days, the winds relax a little bit. Still could be gusting at times up to 25 or 30 miles per hour Thursday and Friday. But on Saturday, you'll really notice the winds start to increase, whipping up to 45 miles per hour in terms of the gusts. And if you're wondering when our next chance of rain returns, we had some fog and drizzle this morning, nothing measurable, and it looks like we're going to be staying dry through the rest of today and most of tomorrow. It's not until late tomorrow night into early Friday morning. This is 3 o'clock in the morning that we start to see another rain chance. Now, it's going to be a close call on the rain. The better chance will miss us to the south, but some storms might develop in south central Kansas and then kind of move to the northeast these could bring some heavy rain if we get them but again it's only about a 30 or 40 percent chance as the better chances will remain down to our south we catch a break during the day on friday but once we get past sunset another round of thunderstorms could move in this time again friday night there could be a few stronger thunderstorms with large hail the main threat so we've we'll been tracking that chance as we get just a little bit closer and checking out the seven day forecast you can see that temperatures remain above average throughout the next several days highs in the mid to upper 60s so we're not thinking as many 70s but still not bad at all for march again storm chances coming in possibly tomorrow night a better chance friday night there might be a few showers on Saturday, but I think most of the day is dry. It's going to be a really windy day. And then as we head toward next week, maybe another round of showers coming in Monday night or Tuesday. So that is your latest weather forecast. Riley, back to you. Great job, Joshi. Today's Stuka challenge is to do a puzzle. Send in your pictures into the Instagram page. Yesterday's Fort Challenge winners are Bethany Drews, Grace Unra, and Camden McClymans. I'm disappointed in you, Andrew. That's all we have for today, Bikes. See you tomorrow.